Hello there fellow model makers and welcome to the fifth and last part of my hobby boss 148 scale A10 Thunderbolt 2 build. So we left off last time having painted the kit and now we only need to add the finishing touches. Time to start working on the landing gear assembly which I do by first painting all the gear parts and the inside of the landing bay covers with Tamiya X2. A few of you have asked me to share my airbrush details and settings. So here goes. I am currently using the humble Neo for Iwata. The compressor is set to about 15 psi. Also the paint has been diluted with Tamiya X20A thinner for acrylics in a ratio of 3 parts paint to 1 part thinner or thereabout. Outside of the landing covers are painted with XF27, black green. I maintain the mottling pattern so that the paint on the covers matches the rest of the kit. I hand paint some details on the assembly like these cables. Time to start applying the decals. Off camera, I gave the kit a couple of coats of gloss varnish to seal in all the work done so far and to ensure that the decals go on smoothly without any silvering. Once the varnish was dry, I used Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer to fix the decals. I dab the area with a little Mr. Mark Setter and then slide the decal in place. Once I am satisfied with the position of the decal, I remove all liquid and air trapped under the decal by running a Q-tip gently over it. Finally, the decal is set in place with some Mr. Mark Softer. Just a word about the decals in the kit. They are thin and soft and conform to the surface very nicely. On the downside, being so thin, they easily fold back on themselves and double up. So be very careful when dipping them in water and keep an eye on them. They are likely to separate from the carrier paper quickly. Also, be careful while sliding them off the paper while transferring them to the kit surface.
to paint the engines, I first masked it off and sprayed on some AK Interactive's aluminium from the Extreme Metal series. These paints are pre-thinned, so no thinner was added. Also, I brought down the air pressure in the compressor to about 12 psi, so that the paint does not fly all over the kit. Once I was done with the aluminium, I sprayed some burnt metal along the circumference of the engine blades. For some light weathering, I pin washed the landing gear and the panel lines on the plane with Tamiya's black panel line accent colour. The extra wash was later wiped away with a Q-tip moistened with odourless spirit. The landing gear assembly was now put together. These rubber tyres are a joy to work with. Very nice and they look beautiful. The landing gear assembly is glued in place. The entire kit was given a coat of matte varnish and allowed to dry.
Time to remove the masking on the canopy. This has turned out really well. I am very happy. Mr. Masking Saul has done its job and gets a big thumbs up from me. The last thing remaining on this kit is the weapons load. The kit offers many payload options, but I am going with one of the simpler ones. I start by gluing all the missiles, pods and bombs together. All the parts are pre-shaded with Tamiya Black. Next, some of the bombs are painted with Mr. Color 304 Olive Drab. I use Mr. Color Thinner 400 to dilute the paint. I use about 3 parts paint to 1 part thinner. These GBU-8 bombs come in a brilliant paint scheme, but it is a little time consuming to paint them. Having given these units an olive drab coat, I start masking them.
the area inside the masking tape is filled with masking fluid. The bombs were given a coat of silver and now another round of masking. The last paint to go on the GBUs is this gold leaf. Time to unmask the GBU 8s. I love this color scheme. It looks beautiful. The bombs are mounted on the aircraft. And here it is ladies and gentlemen, my take on the Hobby Boss 148 scale A10 Thunderbolt 2 kit. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video series and found something useful. Please do like and comment. If this is your first time here, please do subscribe. Till next time, good luck and keep modeling.